What's up, everybody? This is Dark Masic with Brutally Delicious. Coming at you through a review of Wishing Well's brand new album, Sin and Shame. So, as I often say, here's another band I've never heard of. I'm going in cold. I normally start these by trying to compare them to other bands based on their sound or compare the singer to somebody. But this band sounds different depending on which track is going. So I think I'm just going to get into the songs and make the comparisons there. The one label I will give before starting the song reviews is Retro. This band is obviously a throwback. The first track in the line of fire... When I heard this, I was thinking like classic U.S. power metal or new wave of British heavy metal. It really had strong early Jag Panzer vibes to it. Throw in a little bit of sax in and you've got a winning formula for a great opening track. That said, color me surprised when track two, Soul Rider, came on. This one sounded a lot more typical classic rock, maybe a bit like early Judas Priest before British Steel. I think this could have fit in on Sin After Sin somewhere. This style does seem to be more predominant. I don't think any of the other tracks made me think New Wave of British Heavy Metal. But moving on. The song Lonely Road. This is a good plotting track. More mid-tempo. I think it would go great as like the second to last song in a band's live set. I can just see after finishing the last note of this, the singer saying, We've got one more for you guys. We love you. The song Dogs Bark But The Caravan Rolls On. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Standout track for sure. This song reminded me of Wolf Mother, another, I think they're Australian, throwback band from 15 years ago or so. And by that, I just mean more of like the classic rock, deep purple slash Black Sabbath vibes, but faster. Quick note on the track Heavenly Body. Is this like a church hymnal? Does this band have a religious theme? One of their songs is called The Golden Rule. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Last song I'm going to call out is Dancing Across the Stars. I thought this was by far the best track on the album. It actually reminded me mostly of The Darkness. Like, I believe in a thing called Love the Darkness. Funny because they're kind of known as being a pseudo-throwback band too. A lot of people thought that in 2002 they were trying to sound like an 80s band. But it's high praise. Very good songwriting. So just a bit of rambling here. I've never been able to get into the show Stranger Things. I was not alive in the 80s, so I can't relate to what I would call subpar writing that just happens to use 80s nostalgia as a crutch. And where I'm going with this, I was not alive for the era that it sounds like Wishing Well is trying to ape here, but I found this to be a very entertaining album nonetheless. So I think that's a testament to their songwriting and their general craft of being able to use that old style without being solely derivative or referential. Nice effort, dudes. Rock on. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effie Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.